Okay. Uh, could you describe one of your typical work days? <laughs> one of my typical work days. Well, you you're on the phone quite a bit as a as a criminal defense lawyer because you get a lot of emergencies and calls. So that, there's a lot of of lot of putting out fires as far as talking to people about what's going to happen next because people are normally nervous about what's going to happen in a criminal case. So does it stress you out? Ever? No, not well. When you first start and you and sometimes you don't know the answers to it, it can stress you out and it can, and you can work. You know, it takes a little longer to figure things out, but once you've been doing a long time, I've been doing it about 18 years now, so <laughs> so once you get to that point, you 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 sort of pretty much it. almost <laughs> seen everything, so it's not as stressful and it makes it easier to do. I also am in, in court two to three times a day on different motions and matters with court, so that one of the nice parts about being a criminal defense attorney is you, you get out a lot, you know, you don't have to sit behind a yeah. desk all day. So. Uh, what skills are acquired in your position on a day-to-day -day basis? You know, one of the things I always tell people is communication skills. I worked as a waiter for a long time, yeah. and I, I think how that helped me is with my communication skills. I mean, communication's huge for any kind of an attorney, especially for a criminal defense attorney, because people are incredibly nervous about what's going to happen. Yeah. So, what I try to do is break it down in, in simple. I don't like to speak legalese to them. I like to try to break it down into simple. Hey, here's what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen on this court day. You don't you don't need to worry too much about this one. This is what we're going to try to do, and depending on how severe the crime is, depending on how easy that is. Sometimes you're telling people, hey, there's nothing to worry about. Sometimes you're saying to people, hey, you know, we're going to try to keep you out of prison, or we're going to try to limit your prison from 30 years to 15 years. So there's there's different areas, uh, but but skills like being able to talk to people um, and get along with people even even with prosecutors you, if you have a good relationship with them you tend to be able to and they trust you a trust is big you tend to get more you tend to get better deals for your clients and so I, I think also uh, being ethical and them knowing that you're ethical and you're not trying to slide things through on them is also a good thing uh, writing skills are good too that, that's yeah. good. Uh, what parts of your job do you find most challenging um, probably, probably cases where, uh, where you know they're going to go to prison and you're trying to reduce prison sentences, trying to explain to family, you know, cause mo most people, I mean, they, everybody thinks, Hey, you're just, there's all these hardcore criminals. Most people you represent aren't really hardcore criminals, but you get some that make really big mistakes, maybe for a first time or second time and, and trying to keep them out of prison or, you know, if they're young, keeping them off the sex offender list for stupid things that they, they, they did. I, that affects me. Because so you, I, you have to talk to the family also? Like well, so you, not really talk to the family, but kind of help them to try to understand. No. It, it's hard. You, you don't want to go through too many family because you get word back and it becomes, uh, you, you know, the message is different. And you have to explain to the family also, hey, talking to you is dangerous because they can subpoena it, even though they won't, because the only person I have attorney-client privilege with is my my client. So if they feel like they want to bring their family in to talk about it, you always have to explain to them, hey, this any communications we have can be subpoenaed by the court, and they can use them against you. They, they For all intents and purposes, it doesn't happen, but, but it's something you need to be aware of. All right. Um, what do you find most enjoyable? Um, what, when you can get when you can get people good deals and you know help them out with <laughs> help them out with okay well, well it's it's like like I said not most people aren't criminals they make a mistake and you know they're tense and they're worried and you know what what I feel good about a lot of times I'll tell people hey this isn't a big deal you can probably do this on your own you can go in here's how to handle it um, I feel good when I do that just because you know if they don't need to, if they don't need to spend money on attorney they shouldn't but I find a lot of them come back and say hey I just don't feel comfortable going in by myself and you know we yeah. come in with me but get, getting people especially young kids you know maybe not your age well I, I do juvenile stuff but kids that are barely 18 a, a criminal record oh, following them around is really it really affects you that you know job school all kinds of things so being able to help them and keep it off their record if it's a first offense is is something I like doing um are there any negatives to your job yeah, there's definitely negative to the job. I mean, you, you when you're dealing with people that are that are, it's, you know, a lot of them are high stress situations. A lot of them, they're they, when they're when you have to go forward to trial on cases and you have hard evidence and you have a client that that still wants to go through with it. Preparing for trials extremely stressful. Trying to, you know, figure out what you're going to do to try to get them acquitted. Um, 
How many hours do you work in a typical week? It just depends. It depends. It can be anywhere from, you know, 40 hours to, you know, 70 hours, just depending on what you have going on with cases. But, but it's not, it's not too bad. You're in court quite a bit. Um, but I, I do, I mean, I probably don't, I don't add them up, but I get a lot of calls when I go home after, after hours, I'll, I give my cell phone number out. So that's probably computed into the 40 to 70 hours, just depending on what you have. If you have trial coming up, it can be quite a bit of hours because you're working all day and night to try to get ready. Do you like court? Is it like I do. Yeah, I love court. <laughs> that's yeah. weird. Okay. Yeah. So, well, and it's funny because you'll find certain guys that that enjoy court, the court process, and then other guys that are really good at research and writing. I, I don't I don't like the research and writing as much. And so we've got attorneys here that if we have to do research and writing, we have them do it. But they they hate going to court. They don't like mm -hmm. being in front of judges. So it's good to have that diversity in in a firm. Um, which seasons of the year are toughest in your job? Um, I, you know, the, the holidays, I, the holidays may be the toughest. I, it's funny that you're interviewing me on the holidays. I know. Because, you're like, actually, it sucks right now. Yeah, well, yeah <laughs> because you, because you're thinking it's going to be kind of casual. Hey, there's not going to be, but a lot of problems happen over the holidays. Uh, you have a lot of people out of the office. You have to, if you have to get things in, you've got people out, you're trying to find people to do stuff. I'm having to do some secretarial work, which isn't a good thing, you know, when I'm doing that. So it, it can be kind of stressful during the holidays because people want things done right now and courts are closed. It's hard to get a court date at the last second. I was so trying it's, to look it's for courts. One. Yeah, right. they're closed. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, how would you describe the corporate culture? The corporate culture, mm -hmm. um, it, we're not really cor as far as like criminal stuff. Just or, the culture, I guess. Well, culture, corporations. I mean, it just depends what you're in. We're not really. I mean, firm. I, I think. I think a better question would be a firm culture. Yeah. Most most law firms. I mean, you do have corporate lawyers, but most law firms. It just depends on how big the law firm is. Um, usually it's pretty good to work in. We try to make it a good culture for everybody to work in. I, I think giving rewards to everybody that works with you and, and, you know, rewarding them when you're doing well, like keeps, keeps morale well and it keeps morale good and people, you know, enjoy working here. You get better work out of everybody. So, yeah. uh, what educational preparation would you recommend for someone who wants to enter this field? Uh, just uh, uh, with anything, I think you just take do as much as you can to be well-rounded in like high school, you know, play sports, be in clubs, do things like that, like like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I think being well-rounded, you know, helps with any kind of profession. Um, w with the law, especially, I think just like I talked about before, communication is really huge because people can say the same thing, but the person who says it better, who relates with someone better, usually you know you can get you can get more clients with that you keep clients happy uh, you get better deals for clients so i think communication skills are incredibly important for for law school so if i was thinking about like an undergraduate again i did political science which i don't think me did me a whole lot of good for law school i you know some kind of a communications minor may help with uh with being a lawyer mm -hmm. what qualifications would you seek in a new hire um it's it's always difficult, but you're looking for someone that's like I, I'm looking for someone that can communicate well with me, and then I'm also looking for someone who's who doesn't seem to be timid and scared to go in. I mean, it, you have a lot of attorneys, and everybody's going to be nervous at first, but you're looking for someone that that has the desire and wants to move forward and, says, and, and is excited to do everything, uh, depending on what kind of law they're going into. If you if you're looking for someone for research and writing, you definitely want to see some of their writing skills and, and what they've done if they have a resume. Uh, what is the typical salary of an attorney? It it's all over the place. It just, <laughs> yeah, it just depends. It depends on where you are. I mean, it can everybody everybody just automatically thinks attorneys are loaded with money, and it's not it's not necessarily true. Uh, if you work for a big firm like a big firm down downtown that has hundreds of attorneys, you probably start at a higher rate in Utah. I, I think in Utah you probably it's gone down a little bit. Um, but it's probably starting anywhere from eighty to a hundred thousand dollars for the for the really big firms. Really small, like if you're a two man, three man firm, you're looking at sometimes they they'll give you a base salary, and then they'll give above. You have to make a certain amount of money, and you get bonuses based on the money you bring in beyond that. That's for really small firms. For firms, our medium sized firms um, like ours in Utah. 
you know, you're, you're probably starting now at about, you know, it could be 60, 50, 60,000, something like that. All right. Uh, what do you like or dislike about the criminal justice system? Um, I, I mean, the U.S. has the best criminal justice system yeah. there is. There's no doubt about it. But it's what I, one thing I always say to my clients is because they'll say, well, it's just not fair that this happened. I can't believe. And I, I always say, OK, so what next? I mean, it's it's not fair. It depends on the judge you get. It depends on the jurisdiction you're in. Depends on the prosecutor you have, how hard they are to deal with. Depends on your client. It depends on the other attorney. So there's there's a lot of factors that go into it, and it and unfortunately, it really isn't fair. If you if you have an easy jurisdiction, you can have the same facts in a case and get an incredible deal in one jurisdiction, and in another jurisdiction, get a, not be able to get a really good deal because they're they're more strict. They have or the prosecutors hard to deal with. Um, in another place, the judge may be giving easier sentences than a judge over in another case. So it's not really it, it's not really uniform everywhere, all over the place. Um, what age did you decide you wanted to become an attorney? I, I you know, I think I always wanted to be an attorney because I couldn't do math or science <laughs> very well. So, so I thought, hey, I can I can talk well and I like debate and so. I always kind of, I, I wanted to, of course, I wanted to be a, an athlete, you know, I wanted to be a professional athlete, but I knew that wasn't going to happen, so, so pretty, at a pretty young age, I knew what I wanted to do. Um, okay, would you recommend becoming an attorney? Um, I would, I, I think it's, a, it, again, I think if you go in it with the right perspective, there's, you have a lot of options. You don't necessarily need to be an attorney. The nice thing about having a law degree is there's a lot of different areas you can go into. You don't necessarily, like I said, you don't necessarily need to be an attorney, but if you choose to be an attorney, there's a lot of different areas of law. Like, like I talked about, you can be someone who loves to research and write. A lot of big firms are looking for people that just do that, so you don't need to be in court. You can research, write, and if that's what you like to do. You, corporate attorneys, you mentioned corporate, um, they're doing contracts, different things like that. And, and you can switch. If you, if you feel like you don't like something, you can switch somewhere else. Like There's a lot of prosecutors that are now defense attorneys and mm -hmm. defense attorneys that go to prosecution. So the, the thing I like about uh, being a lawyer, even though just like we talked about with your mom, you know, we don't like change. But you, if you, if you want to change, you can change a lot. If you don't like an area of law you're in, you can go, you know, try something else or, or go and you know, try to be like an HR director or something that's completely out of the law. You can do other things because people have respect for, for the degree itself. Yeah. Those um, are a lot of options. Are there any mistakes you made along the way that you would like high school students like me to try to avoid if aspiring to become involved in the criminal justice system? Um, I, 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 there's, been, there's been cases when you first start out as a lawyer it's it, mentoring isn't really i mean i try to be more of a mentor to people because it's hard to get people that really mentor you um and so in criminal cases because the stakes are so high um it, it's important to if you don't know something to go ask someone I, I i think i've made some mistakes along the way in just going forward with a case where i probably should have called even though i didn't really have a mentor i should have called and asked someone hey you know what would you do with this where would you go with this so don't be afraid to ask for advice if you don't know something i mean you don't you when you start out in a career you kind of feel like you need to know everything and you realize you get into your career that you didn't need to know you know you there's no way you could have known everything that you learn on the job most of it and so don't be afraid to ask questions to to other attorneys to to older attorneys that that have more experience if you especially if you have a, a tough situation because even even beyond criminal it can have you know horrible effects on clients if you do the wrong if you make the wrong decisions um, do you have anything to say to future attorneys? Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> no, just, just, I mean, just like you'd said, how do you prepare? I mean, just do well in everything you can and try to, try to be in, try to be as well-rounded as you can, because I think that once you get in any profession, but, it, but I think even more so in the law, the, the, the more well-rounded you are, the more valuable you, do, you are to an employer and the more things that you can branch off into. Um, this is like just a question for me. Like, have you ever dealt with a case where you like almost felt guilty trying to help this person because they were like 
they yeah. did something so bad? <laughs> That's a good question. That's good. Yeah, you, you do. I, I mean, the, the nice thing about being an attorney, you don't need to take any case that you don't want to. But there are some cases that are pretty, pretty horrible cases, and you find out, you don't know what the first, but you find out when you get discovery, police reports and stuff, how horrifying it was. Um, and I always kind of kind of joke with people about it, but it, it kind of is true sometimes. I, you know, if I have someone like a family member, a friend of family member, it, it always seems to be tough to get a good deal, even if it's an easy case. And then if I get someone that I don't really like that much, I mean, I'm going to do the same job for everybody and I'll get these incredible deals. And I'm like, oh man, are you really, you're going to give that to him? I, I, I don't say that, but I'm thinking that in my mind. And so it, it, that's, uh, that goes to being fair too. And, you know, it's not fair because you have people sometimes that, that don't have any record and haven't done anything wrong, but they have a tough prosecutor and you can't keep it off their record. Then you have some guy that you think is kind of sleazy and, you know, and you, you go in and you're shocked at the deal they're giving you. But, you know, you obviously go through with it because you're representing your client. But yeah, you can. You can definitely feel that way. Right. You, you, usually not a lot, though. <laughs> okay. Because you can always just say, hey, I don't, I don't feel good about taking your case anymore. You can? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. Well, that's about every question. All right. Well, good. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So you thinking about being a lawyer or just... Um, you're something. Young, you're... I actually wanted to become a forensic psychologist. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. So I have to just go and figure you out know, things wait, about it, I guess. But you never do. But the funny part is, in high, school, in high school, people usually don't know. I mean, they say that the average person in college, I think, changes their major. Like three to four times. Yeah, three, within like two years. Like, I think it may be more than that. So. Yeah.